this is Dr. Juwan. In this short video, I'm going to talk about how the different effects of when table sugar sucrose gets broken down to glucose and fructose and how that affects the body and the brain. But before I do that, if you're new to my channel, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification. If you're watching on Facebook, I always appreciate it. If you find this stuff valuable, please share with a friend and hit the like button. So I hope you enjoy. So when I'm talking about glucose and fructose, how the effects are different on the body because one affects the brain, the other affects the gut, one affects the satiation center. So glucose, the thing about glucose is that you get an insulin response. Now the function of insulin is to lower the blood, the circulating blood sugar because it acts as an escort to bring the sugar into the cell. Also, but however, if there's too much circulating glucose, what does insulin do? It stores it as fat for energy for later on. Also too, it slows the metabolism. And also too, it increases inflammation. You cannot lose weight as long as you're having an insulin response due to glucose. Now fructose, okay, that's different. That affects the body totally different because you don't get an insulin response from fructose, which is actually pretty dynamic. It's metabolized totally different in the liver. Okay, it actually too much fructose, and now where do you get fructose from? From fruit. Okay, this is why I always talk about you should only need you know, you should only need a couple servings of fruit a day. I have patients who have gained a lot of weight. Why? Because they eat too much fruit. Yes, it's fructose. Okay, there's no insulin response. It's a metabolized different in the liver. You'll get fatty liver. You'll bog up the liver by having too much fructose. Okay. It increases inflammation. Too much of it increases the triglycerides. What are triglycerides? Blood fat. Okay, it'll cause leaky gut. Now, the thing about fructose, which is I found pretty dynamic, it actually stimulates the brain's reward center. So this is how people get addicted to sugar, just like how they get addicted to anything else. So when they, when they take the sugar and the carbohydrates away, Yes, there is a withdrawal response. Okay, so let's break it down. So when you have table sugar, table sugar is, is sucrose. Okay, break down the sucrose, you have the fructose and you have the glucose. Now on this side, okay, glucose, let me come over here. So with glucose, okay, it gets broken down, it goes into the bloodstream. Now, when it goes into the bloodstream, now you have a bunch of circulating uh, glucose molecules so it triggers the, ins, uh, the pancreas to release insulin because why? Because insulin acts as an escort to bring the glucose into the cell for utilization. However, if you have too much circulating glucose, then it goes to the liver, okay, to be stored, or it goes into the fat cell to be stored for later on, okay? Now the thing about if you have too much glucose in your system, okay, it, you're, it's gonna be blocked. If your if your cells are insulin resistance is resistant, so too much glucose in the blood, again, it's gonna you're gonna eventually become insulin resistant, which again eventually a type uh, pre diabetic and then a type two diabetic. Now, how do you prevent that? Exercise, of course, watch the diet, watch the carbohydrates, but exercise, exercise is key, especially some type of weight resistant exercise. Do I suggest go in there and lift a thousand pounds? No. But you do want to do some resistance. Why? Because when you stimulate those muscles, whether it be lifting 100 pounds or just lifting your body weight, you're actually creating more insulin receptors in your muscle. Why? Because the more insulin receptors you have in your muscle, sure, you're going to utilize that, that glucose. So this is how you actually stabilize your blood sugar levels by exercise. This is why exercise is key for everyone. Okay. So then let's flip it over. Let's talk about fructose. Fructose is totally different, okay? So fructose, again, it goes in the bloodstream, it goes to the liver. It helps store with, uh, basically, so fructose gets converted to glucose, which, again, it gets stored as glycogen. I always say this. So if glucose is a grape, glycogen is a bunch of grapes. That's stored energy for to utilize in between meals, okay? But what happens if you take in too much sugar and you're not exercising? Or you're just taking in a big meal and your body just can't break it down naturally or effectively. So then it gets shunted over to triglycerides. 
okay? And what are triglycerides? Blood fat. Problem is, then it gets into the bloodstream, okay, and it gets deposited in uh, in your in your the arterial system. This is where you get the bla the bad cholesterol, increased LDL, low density lipoproteins, and also increased triglycerides. When I see blood labs, when I see increased low density lipoproteins and triglycerides, sure, the reason why you have all this stuff is because you're eating too much sugar and fat, because that's the blood fat. Which again, what's going to happen? It's going to lead to fatty liver. Okay, so again, so sucrose gets broken down to glucose for energy. Fructose, okay, again, it goes also too for energy storage, but also too much fructose because it's digested differently, broken down differently in the body, will tend to more lean over to the fatty liver. So then how do you lower, how do you control all this stuff? Simple, diet. Diet and exercise. Don't limit the carbohydrate intake. Limit the breads, the pastas, all the, the excessive carbohydrates, the sugar. Okay, because you don't want you want your body to utilize it rather than store it. So I hope this helps. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Be good.